The FCT administration is at it again, and they promise that they're not being high-handed and mean. They insist that these measures must be taken to keep the nation's capital safe and properly run. This time, the hammer is coming down on unlicensed hotel owners. Yes, people get land from the FCT administration with a license to, let's say, build apartments for rent, and they go and build hotels instead some with bars and open air music that runs through the night, breaking the law and inconveniencing the neighbors while polluting the environment. My guest on the program, who is the custodian of Abuja's master plan, explains why these airing hoteliers have been given two weeks notices to get proper documentation where necessary and accept their punishment where necessary as well. Our focus on the nation's capital takes a look at the reactions of residents to this new move. And as we do every week, we give you an update on the biggest stories from Nigeria's seat of power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. Let's begin with a rundown of the major stories from Nigeria's seat of power. President Muhammadu Buhari on Wednesday met with His Royal Majesty King Charles III in Buckingham Palace. While the reason for the meeting was not clear, both leaders expectedly discussed bilateral relations and how the United Kingdom can help Nigeria in the fight against terrorism. President Muhammadu Buhari is in the United Kingdom for a medical checkup. He left on October the 31st. The Federal Executive Council has approved the creation of a database of the National Capital Projects Information System of the government to track the growing number of abandoned and uncompleted projects across the country, particularly in the last five years. The National Capital Projects and Information System, which involves key infrastructure ministries, is to be headed by the Finance Minister to prioritize and fund selected projects on a yearly basis and possibly privatize some of the projects. The Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Mr. Clement Agba, disclosed this after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, at the State House in Abuja. Degrees are not enough to make it in the 2022 workplace. Young people must acquire the adequate skills necessary to be employable and add value to the bottom line of any company. This was a charge given by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, to the 20,000 graduates of Nigeria's first set of Jubilee Fellows in Abuja. According to the Vice President, the Jubilee Fellowship was created to resolve the unemployment problem in Nigeria, and the plan is to have at least 20,000 beneficiaries of the Jubilee Fellows program every year. Train services on the Abuja Kaduna rail line will resume later this month. This is according to the Minister of Transportation, Mr. Muazu Sambo, who disclosed this while presenting the scorecard of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration in the transport sector since 2015. He says adequate security measures, including surveillance equipment, have been put in place to ensure the safety of passengers. Train services on the Abuja Kaduna route were suspended over seven months ago following the attack by gunmen on a Kaduna bound train in Katari Kaduna State, which led to the death of eight passengers and abduction of over 100 passengers. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller, says the executive's position that it is not obligated to pay salaries to lecturers for the time spent on strike is premised on the law and the government's legitimate interest in preventing moral hazard and discouraging disruptive industrial actions. Honorable Bajabia Mila, however, says interventions have been made to explore the possibility of partial payments to the lecturers. The Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, Mr. Mele Kiari, says the involvement of private securities has helped in the fight against crude oil theft. While highlighting threats to his life, Mr. Kiari says the cost of securing the pipelines is meager compared to what's been saved from the decision to hire private security networks. He stated this during a legislative summit on transparency and accountability in the oil sector, where he also debunked claims that the drop in oil production was solely due to oil theft. 
speaking in Abuja while presenting the scorecard of the Ministry of Aviation under President Muhammadu Buhari. The Minister of Aviation, Mr. Hadi Sirika, explains that the stand of the federal government to own only 5% of Nigeria Air is in order to give room for efficiency and proper management. He adds that Nigeria Air will be starting off on a sound footing with a $350 million funding by Ethiopia Air, Nigerian institutions, and the federal government as key investors. For the commencement of operations by Nigeria Air, the nation's new national carrier remains sacrosanct. The National Security Advisor, retired Major General Babagana Munguno, is sounding a note of warning to political parties and their candidates to prevail on their supporters across the country to desist from conducts that are capable of threatening the peaceful conduct of the 2023 general elections. General Munguno gave the warning at an emergency meeting of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security at the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja, asserting that President Buhari has already directed security agencies to deal decisively with any individual or group that wants to undermine the peaceful conduct of elections in 2023. The emergency security meeting was convened by the electoral umpire following the recent attacks on its facilities in Ogun and Oshun states. Those people who have gangsters working for them, I want to send a very, very clear warning, a categorical, unequivocal warning to each and every one, regardless of whichever party, including the party of the president. For as long as you decide to scuttle the electoral process, you will be visited with appropriate, with commensurate response. I want to assure you and I'm saying this with all sincerity. Let's talk business, hotel businesses to be precise. These establishments are part of a value chain that feeds millions of people. But in Abuja, many of them are working legally and constituting a nuisance to the residents of the nation's capital. So what is to be done? In our focus on the FCT, we look at past attempts to stop this trend, this present move, and the residents speak to us on how this trend has affected their lives. The Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTE, through the Department of Abuja Metropolitan Management Agency, has threatened to shut down or revoke title documents of hotels operating in residential areas in the FCT after the expiration of a two-week ultimatum given to them. The threat was issued by the AMMC coordinator, Mr. Umar Shuaibu, during a press conference on November the 3rd. He explained that the renewed clampdown against airing hotels, guest houses and motels, among others in the FCT, is to help curb insecurity in the nation's capital. The hotels have been given two weeks to get the proper documentation, stick to the use for which their license was given, and in addition, profile their guests before they are allowed to lodge in these hotels. He said, quote, The FCT has observed with great concern that some random persons alter their land use from the initial approved peppers to hospitality purposes. Many of these contraventions are residential quarters that were converted to hotels, brothels, etc. These constitute security challenges in the entire territory. Also identified is that many criminal elements disguise themselves and check into some of these hospitality services as guests and hide out before and after carrying out their nefarious activities. These property owners are operating hotels without following the appropriate procedure of acquiring all necessary approvals from the relevant agencies of the FCT administration, end of quote. This is not the first time the FCT administration has tried to sanitize the nation's capital by revoking and sometimes demolition hotels they say disobey the use for which their licenses were given. A popular example was the demolition of the Caramelo Hotel and nightclub in the Otaku district in May 2019 after several warnings from the FCT administration and noise pollution complaints by neighbors. The hotel's owner at the time was displeased with the demolition. Because you want to kill a fly and you go and use a sledgehammer, almost again now. 
Is this the country we are trying to build? This is the country we want to make work. This is the country we have a lot of security problems, many problems in this country that needs to be solved. I am contributing to help solve that problem. At least over 100 direct labor employed. And I don't mind it's a devil's workshop. At the time, the FCT minister explained that sticking to the licenses they were given when the land was allocated is crucial to having a well-organized nation's capital. Even if you get a land, the purpose clause is very clear. Any transaction you do on land, whether it is lease, whether it is hire, whether it is uh, sale, is all governed by rules and regulations. If the situation is as you just described now, even as you described it, it was wrong because you do not sublease or even lease out a property meant for a clinic to be converted into a nightclub without getting the right approval. So it's all a matter of process. And uh, it's not as if bulldozers will just go and start demolition. It's not done anywhere, even in the FCT. The rubble that used to be Caramello nightclub is still here in 2022, raising the question of what happens to hotels that provide jobs to hundreds of staff after they are closed or demolished. Guarinpa district is home to many hotels. The problem is Guarinpa is mostly residential and a lot of the residents have made covert complaints to the FCT administration on the sound pollution and environmental nuisance they pose to the neighborhood as many of these places have open air music in their bars that sometimes run all through the night. The bars close to neighborhoods is going to affect uh, children because they're closer to their homes and which on the aging, which might cause on the aging, which is not good for kids. So removing of those bars might be good, but the f bad effect is going to be um, jobs lost and businesses closed. So government should try and fi make a policy that will make favor both parties. It's a good one, because unlike where I'm staying, there's a mummy closer to my house and it makes arm robber to disturb that area. Apart from that, it's not even good for children because it makes them to be wayward, them seeing what they are not supposed to see. So to me, I don't like it. It's very, very important. Bars are established near residents, you know. Um, I think that will actually, uh, you know, affect the upbringing of the kids by the parents. And if it is going to affect the upbringing and trainings of the kid by the parents, I think they should be removed from, from residential uh, places. They have information that um, it's a security risk to have such things near residences or estates. They have the right to go ahead, remove them, but also try to relocate them to where they can continue with their business. Because if they are taken out of business, it is for me a minus, in my opinion, for both them and country. And also the after effect also is insecurity. When you are fighting insecurity and you are making people redundant and unemployed, you are in a way creating insecurity also. Yes, so do you so, to any bar or hotel? No, I don't, but I don't intend to because I, um, uh, to be sincere with you, usually noisy to be in that kind of environment. I think from inception there are places that were designated for commercial poses as land being marked for residential and commercial. I think in that respect it's okay to remove uh, the ones that are not appropriately cited. Uh, so if a bar is in a place where a bar is not supposed to be, remove it and then take it to the appropriate place. Let there be orderliness. There are still many unanswered questions when it comes to the running of hotels in Abuja. How were these hotels built and operated for so many years if they were in contravention of the use for which the land was allocated? These hotels pay all kinds of levies to the FCT administration. How was that allowed to happen if the hotel owners were breaking the law? What happens to the millions in property that would be lost if these places are shut down 
and what of the millions of jobs these hotels provide and the value chain that would be gravely affected. In any case, this warning has been given and in two weeks we would see what actions the FCT administration will take against the Herring Hotel owners. My guest on the program is Mr. Mukhtar Galadima, custodian of the Abuja Master Plan and director, Department of Development Control for the FCT administration. He answers a lot of the questions we still have on this issue of airing hoteliers and their relationship with the Federal Capital Territory Administration. And of course, what happens after the two weeks elapse and the value chain that will be affected by these closures? Please watch this. Mr. Mukhtar, welcome to Dateline Abuja. It's my pleasure. Why, why are we doing this right now? This whole idea of shutting down hotels in residential areas, what's the thinking process that led to this decision being made right now? Thank you so very much. There are a lot of uh, perspectives and parameters why we are taking this uh, action now. You know, it's, this, it's say that uh, it is better late than never. Um, one, in every organized society, things are done properly. Abuja cannot be an exception. You see, these hotels either are operating without valid registration with constituent authority, or their operations are in violation of uh, environmental setting. So that's why the FCT administration thought it fit in collaboration with uh, some security agencies that uh, we need to organize this industry. We shouldn't just allow it to just grow without coordination and proper management. Hence, the need for us to come in now to see how we can get this uh, tourism industry well organized. You know, one of, the, one of the hotels that comes to mind when this happens is uh, one, a hotel many years ago that was demolished uh, in the Utaku area. Most people know where I'm talking about right now. Mm -hmm. It was a very popular hotel. Yes. And, because, uh, and they had this live band that used to run all through the night. And none of us really knew the kind of impact they were having on their environment until the day that the FCT administration decided to demolish this particular um, hotel. And that was when we realized that this was a residential area. There were, there were primary schools around. The place was opposite, a very important office, you know. And then we stayed, because we hadn't seen it during the daytime. Mm. We had only seen it at night. Well, at the time, one of the questions that the owner of the hotel had was the fact that, look, over the years, I have been paying all kinds of levies. Um, he had been billed for all kinds of things for running that hotel in that particular area. And that the FCT authorities had collected these levies from him. Why would you come and start demolishing now many years after? Do you foresee this kinds of situation coming up right now? Because a lot of the hotel owners that we've seen in the FCT, they say, look, we, we pay levies to the FCT administration. If you knew that this place was in violation of the use for which it was granted, why were you collecting levies from them? What really happened with that uh, hotel in question was, yes, the operators were served relevant notices and then somehow along the line, they went in and paid some ch charges that were not even uh, required so as they can use that as an excuse against the administration. But that uh, is it was, they were right and communicated properly that uh, whatever your operation is in violation, considering the nuisance being generated around the environment. So you do admit that they did pay these levies to the FCT administration? Yes, they did. And the FCT administration did collect these levies? Yes. Yes, but then... Why didn't, why didn't the FCT administration reject No, you them? see, sometimes uh, maybe the operator or the man in charge may not have adequate knowledge of uh, these levies are uh, being stopped. Because I recall very, very well that uh, at a point in time, there was a policy that nobody should collect any fees by way of uh, land use contravention because that is the yardstick they used against the administration. But somehow along the line, maybe someone in the system ignorantly went and collected or this. Or corruptly. You can put it anyway. Went and collected uh, this fee. 
So right now you've given these businesses two weeks to do what? They need to go and register their operation with Social Development Secretariat of the FCT administration. Then they can operate validly as a business premises. What about the, the hotels that are an environmental nuisance? You see, that's why I say you need to go and register because in the process of registration, some of these uh, parameters will be assessed whether they can even register you or not. If I was a hotel owner, mm. what could I be doing that would it make my license be revoked? Good. If it is fundamentally proven that it's serving as a kind of a criminal's den. Two, if it is also proven that it's an environmental nuisance by way of uh, noise, by way of uh, poor environmental quality, by all of anything that will endanger other residents of that neighborhood, definitely such a premises will be revoked. Let's talk a bit about criminal dens. There are many security experts who say, look, this is not the way to fight insecurity. It's not by shutting down hotels. You started off sometime this year with the idea that you were going to shut down places of leisure because they were harboring a lot of criminals. Oh, we have to shut down this and this because they're harboring a lot of criminals. Oh, we need to demolish such and such a shanty because they're harboring criminals. People would argue with you that this did not stop terrorist attacks in, in, in the suburbs, at least, of the FCT. With all the efforts that you did, this didn't stop these attacks. And then secondly, how can a business owner know that criminals have turned my hangout joint into a criminal den? Why not use other methods to catch criminals? That's good. The way a manner of even profiling guests in hotel goes a long way to tell you because it has been proven that uh, sometimes, oftentimes, these guests, when they go in, they give you a different name. Mm -hmm. So definitely, we are looking at the technological uh, component that can be installed in some of these hotels. If you are telling us your name, the profile, maybe these apps will dictate and say, no, this is not the right name of this person. Because there has to be collaboration with other agencies like NIMSI, Population Commission, all this is so that there will be a platform for collaboration. So that when I come to a hotel, I'm going to be a guest and then registering my presence, definitely my data, my bio data should be there. What if also, I don't want people to know that I am here? No, you see, I don't have to be a criminal. I don't want people to know that you, I am in this hotel. But you see, oftentimes, some people of questionable character use some of these uh, facilities to plan, hatch, and then go and operate, and then go around. What district in Abuja is worst hit by this phenomenon of um, hotels that are an environmental nuisance and are not properly registered? What district in Abuja do you think? No, for, for now, I cannot say there is this particular district, but uh, we've just started. But from the, also from the feel as one is getting, people are complaining so much about Guarimpa. There is no peace in Guarimpa. People don't rest in Guarimpa. So why should it be like that? Guarimpa was built as a residential estate, purely residential estate, by Federal Housing Authority. Because, um, yes, the FHA submitted their site development plan to FCDA, FCDA approve it, and then they kind of micromanaged the estate. But then it's like uh, the situation at hand now is beyond FHA. So that's why we have to move in now and see how we can superintend and then maybe better the situation. Oh, Mr. Mutar, it's going to be a very long ride for you. <laughs> With your support? With my support. <laughs> we can get it easier. I yes. hope so. Yes. Well, thank you very much for being with us on Date and Abuja, and good luck with the work you have ahead of you. Amen. I'm really grateful. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes. Thanks to my guest and to everyone who spoke to us today on the program. Crimes do not operate in isolation. So all those within the FCT administration complicit in perpetrating this crime must be made to face justice as well. It is painful to think that after years of operating a business and providing jobs to thousands of people feeding an entire value chain, that business is just shut down. But it must be done for the greater good of our city.
We all love our neighborhood watering holes. God knows we need them with all the stress we face every day, but they must be run properly and in accordance with the law. This habit, however, of trying to find solutions to problems that could have been prevented in the first place has to change. That's Dateline Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handles showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Megwa. See you next time.